but this statement is still a proposition. Okay. Like a statement, wait a minute. Okay. This is not a proposition. Since we don't cannot define the value if it's true or false. Okay, it's more like uh, a command or something, right? Like you tell someone to wait for a minute. Okay. Or if the statement is like a question, what time is it? Okay. This is not a proposition. Okay, let's see some more definitions. The first one here saying that if we let P is a proposition, then negation of P okay could be written in this way. Okay. It could be this sign or just like in the textbook they use this sign, okay. They have the same meaning. If P, proposition P is true, negation of P would be false, right? And if we have any two propositions, P and Q, then the logic, logic N, P and Q is called a conjunction of P and Q. Okay. The next one is logic R, okay. which is a disjunction of P and Q. Back to um, logic P and Q, this um, compound proposition would be true only when both P and Q are true, right? What about R? If only P is true, what would happen? Also true, right? The next one is exclusive or. Okay. P X or with Q. Okay. Exclusive or. This statement would be true. Only one. P is true or Q is true. Only one of them is true, not both. Okay, either or. Either or. Okay. Okay. P is true, Q is false. P, X, or Q would be true. If both P and Q are true, P, X, or Q will be false. Okay. The next one is implication. P implies Q. P would be the hypothesis. Okay. If P is true, then Q must be true. So what would make this statement be false? When Q is false and P is true, okay. Otherwise, this statement would be true, right? Definition number six, okay. Would be by condi 
by conditional of P and Q, which would require both P and Q to have the same the same value. Okay. If both P and Q are true, or both of them are false, then this statement would be true, right? We we have learned this in high school. So there are quite some examples in the textbook. Okay, that you have to go back and and read that by yourself. Okay, to review of what you have learned before. So now. Let's see the concept of uh, bit operations. Bit operation. Bit is like just one one digit. Okay, the value of that bit could be either zero or one. A binary value. Okay, could be either zero or one. Nothing else. Or true or false. Okay. Usually we would um, represent true as logic one and false as zero. Otherwise, it would be defined. Definition number seven says that a bit string is a sequence of zero or more bits. Okay. The length of the string is the number of bits in the string. So for this bit string, what is the length of it? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that eleven? Okay. So the length of this bit string is eleven. Okay. Each position. Each bit, okay, this one digit is one bit, right? We have 11 bits concatenated together, meaning that you put them together one by one. 11 of them, so the length is 11. Okay. Um, a little bit of example here. I don't have it in my sheet, so we have got to look at the textbook. Okay, just one example here about bitwise operation. Previously, we discussed about the operation and, or, exclusive, or, and so on. Okay, what about if we do the operation with the bit? If we do bitwise or or operation, we are going to do it one by one, okay? For any two bit strings, for example, these two, okay, if we do or, it would just look at the bit at the same position, okay? Zero means false, one means true. Or zero or one is one. Okay, true or false is true, right? That's why we have the result here. One or one is one. Only zero or zero is zero. Otherwise, the result would be one. That's why we have we do this for every bit position, so we obtain this result for the bitwise or, okay? Similarly, for n, bitwise n, we do it bit by bit, 